from the comments and PMs and messages and so forth that I've been getting, a lot of you have been wondering what's happened to Carl for the last eight months. Well, let me tell you, it's been an interesting trip. Uh, last summer, uh, middle of the summer, end of the summer, I started getting very weak, um, no energy, no stamina. Uh, I could work real hard for about 10 or, 10 or 15 minutes, and uh, then I had to sit down and rest for an hour. Well, it got worse and worse. I couldn't even walk from the house to the barn without being winded. And uh, my wife was a little concerned, and of course I was a little concerned. My kids were concerned. And finally, uh, you know, typical man, I didn't want to go do anything about it. But uh, finally they talked me into going to the cardiologist. And I went down to the cardiologist uh, who hadn't, I hadn't seen before. This was a new doctor for me. So uh, he said, uh, I want you to go take this stress test and then we'll evaluate and see what uh, the problem is. But I think you have a little problem with your heart valve, your aortic valve. Okay, so I went down, signed up for the stress test, went in there and they had a, uh, a licensed practical nurse in there and a couple of big burly guys and uh, a couple of nurses. And they put me up on the uh, machine, hooked up all these wires to me and um, injected me with whatever the thorium or whatever it was that they injected and um, and I got on the st on a machine and I really think they pushed me a little too hard because I collapsed on the uh, treadmill they uh, laid me out on a gurney there and basically uh, they told me if I hadn't been making jokes they would have put me in the hospital immediately because my blood pressure dropped down to 66 over 46 and they were frantic. They called the cardiologist who was on call. The LPN was uh, going berserk. But at any rate, uh, they called the cardiologist and he said, I want to see you in my office right away. So we set up for the cardiologist, went to see him, and he did some uh, more testing and he said, uh, I want you to go see a heart surgeon. And they sent me down to uh, Piedmont Hospital here in Atlanta, which is one of the best heart, heart uh, facilities uh, in the United States. And I went down there and they did a, a bunch of tests on me, uh, did a heart cath, did a whole bunch of other stuff, and they told me that I was going to have to have a new aortic heart valve. Um, and I said, okay, uh, so what does that entail? I said, well, uh, we have this new research program where uh, you, if you're accepted in this research program, you can either get the uh, less invasive um, uh, surgery which they go in through your, your femoral artery, through your crotch, go up through the top of the heart and go down through the aorta, cut out the old um, valve and replace it with a new animal valve of some sort or a mechanical valve. Or, uh, depending on the flip of the coin, you'll get the open heart surgery, and um, um, which is far more invasive and it's traditional. You know, we've been doing this for 50 or 60 years or 40 or 50 or however long. And it's a pretty standard surgery, uh, but uh, if you want to be a participant in this test, you don't get to choose. You, we just flip a coin for you. So I did that. I participated in the clinical study. And of course, uh, I didn't get the, the two-day surgery. I got the six-day surgery. Uh, in other words, I was uh, in the hospital for six days, and they sent me home and got home. And I, I didn't make any progress. I, I, I was home for three or four weeks, uh, three weeks, and after, uh, I was home for four weeks after the surgery, and um, I just wasn't getting anywhere. Wasn't making any progress at all. So I called them back, went back to visit them for my four-week uh, checkup, and they said, well, I, you know, this, is, this isn't good. Um, you, you need to be doing, uh, you need to be making more progress in this. So they sent me back to the cardiologist, uh, and uh, the cardiologist did a chest x-ray and uh, the cardiologist called a pulmonologist, that's a lung doctor, called him uh, immediately and said, I want you to take a look at this x-ray. And the pulmonologist looked at the x-ray and said, I want you in my office tomorrow. Um, okay, fine. I uh, went into the pulmonologist's office tomorrow and they took uh, a little over two liters of fluid off of my left chest cavity and uh, he said that's the most fluid he's ever taken out of a chest cavity on any patient and it was nasty looking stuff as soon as they did that I was like a new man 
Uh, I went home that night. I slept better than I've uh, than I've than I had slept since the surgery, and uh, the very next day I was walking around and uh, it, I was doing very well. And that's been a week and a half ago, and I have been improving dramatically. So I'm on the mend. I'm coming back, and um, it looks like, uh, based on all all the things that the doctors have told me, that uh, I'm going to be back to normal in uh, three or four weeks. They're going to put me on a cardio rehab uh, program next week and uh, I'll be doing a lot more exercising and things like that. And I've got some energy. The only thing uh, that is wrong right now, I have no appetite. I've lost 38 pounds, count them, 38 pounds. Um, that, that's not a good way to lose weight. Um, and nothing tastes the same. Uh, even the beer that I used to drink doesn't taste the same. So I have to force myself to eat. But at any rate, I think it's going to come back. Um, as soon as I get down on the farm and, and start working, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll improve dramatically. And I'm, I'm uh, thinking, I, I went back to work uh, this past week, went back to my regular engineering job, and uh, I'm thinking about going ahead and retiring. I'm 67 years old, and I'm thinking about going ahead and retiring in the next two or three months. Um, because I got so much other stuff to do and I, I don't want to waste my the last few years of my life working for somebody else. Uh, this surgery has probably given me uh, at least five or eight years more. I want to spend it doing what I want to do. During this interim period last November, the property next to our uh, Itsy farm went on, to, uh, went on foreclosure and we basically doubled the size of the Itsy farm by buying the adjoining property. So we've got that now, and it's paid for, and the Itchy Farm is paid for, and uh, we're in pretty good shape, and I, I feel good about uh, where we're going from here. I got a lot of stuff I really want to do. When they put the new valve in, I had a choice of getting a pig valve, or a cow valve, or a mechanical valve. I guess all they had on the shelf was cow valves, because I, that's what I got. So that's why... Uh, that's why I titled this video what I did, and many thanks to the cow. I did make a lot of videos, but I haven't uh, edited them and put them up. So over the next three or four weeks or a month or two months, I'm going to be editing some of those videos I did late last year and start putting them up. I'm going to bring you back and let you uh, keep up with us as we uh, get back into the hoop house. I don't know if you, I didn't post the video, but we did get the cover on the hoop house. It's completely enclosed. We've already put some uh, raised beds in it, and we've got a lot of things we want to put in there. We've got a, a small contract with a, C a local CSA to grow some crops in there using the extended period in the hoop house. So there's a lot of things going on, and um, I hope to bring you some videos that'll, that'll help you learn as we learn. At any rate, uh, thanks for your prayers, thanks for your thoughts and, and good wishes, and uh, keep an eye out on uh, the the uh, NOV 51947 channel and on the Itchy Farm channel and uh, there'll be more videos posted over the next few weeks. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, thanks for your prayers and uh, I'm on the mend.